Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan, and in a previous video, we had the opportunity to check out our first ambient light rejecting projector screen from a company called VividStorm. And in that video, we were really impressed with the performance of that unit, both for its convenience and ease of use, as well as for the quality of the material itself. But this raised an interesting question, since we've never had an ALR screen in our space before and we weren't really expecting such a huge improvement against our old white screen material, we were starting to wonder if it might be a worthwhile investment for us to consider upgrading our main projector screen from this white material to something a little more advanced. So that's what we'll quickly be discussing in today's video. And for those of you that aren't aware, a lot of the projector screens on the market right now are actually made with pretty trivial and commonly available materials. For example, our 120 inch Elite Screen Starframe unit here features a 1.3 gain matte white vinyl material, which is very common, and being that it's only about $200 new, it's perfectly adequate, but there's a lot more to the story here. Depending on your room, projector, and whether or not you've done any light treatment in your room, a white screen can offer anything from pretty decent blacks to just a washed out mess, since the screen material is designed to evenly reflect light to and from all angles. If you don't have an exceptionally bright projector, and you've taken the time to ensure your room is as dark as possible while watching a movie, you probably wouldn't have many complaints, but your black levels are never going to be as good as they could be. Ambient light rejecting screens differ in one very important way here. Rather than a generic white vinyl material, they're usually going to ship with some kind of a specially designed gray material, which is made to control the reflection of light on the surface. The Vivid Storm achieves this by using a fine ribbed pattern, almost like an accordion, to reflect light coming from the bottom of the screen forward, while reflecting light from other directions elsewhere. This is going to offer a few key benefits, which we noticed in our review, like the, dare I say, TV-like black levels and contrast, and a far better image in more typical lighting, for example in a living room. And this is why some companies market these systems as laser TVs, since they're going to perform way better in these kinds of spaces. Of course, the screen we tested here was designed to be used specifically with ultra short throw projectors, which is going to be really convenient if your space isn't fit for a normal throw projector, but there are versions made for use in a regular setup as well if you'd rather go that route. With all that said, I think there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind here as well. For starters, an ALR screen is probably going to set you back a lot more than an equivalent white screen material. Uh, for the 100 inch Vividstorm unit we reviewed, you'd be looking at about $1,350. I am comparing apples to oranges here since that was a fully motorized unit, but you can find comparable fixed frame screens for about $600 to $700, which might still be out of the question for a lot of people, and that's before you even consider how much more light output your projector needs in order to get a bright and vivid image. This isn't much of a concern for more expensive units, but Vividstorm seems to recommend at least an 1800 lumen projector for the 100 inch version of the screen, while the white screen at that size could still offer a pretty good image with significantly less. The quality of the image could also be impacted more depending on your viewing angle, but this is going to vary from screen to screen and more specifically how the texture of that screen material is laid out. ALR screens can also introduce some other minor artifacts depending on your setup that you might not get on a white screen. For example, we noticed a pretty strong moiré pattern in our camera in some of the b-roll footage that we shot for the last video, since the texture of the screen is pretty strong, but this doesn't impact the image any more than a few inches away or so. You do also have to be more careful with how you treat an ALR screen. The fine light rejecting pattern can be a little fragile, so you have to take care while cleaning them. And you might find yourself cleaning your screen a lot more, since little dust spots or maybe even fingerprints are going to be a lot easier to notice on such a reflective gray material. In the end, the choice between an ambient light rejecting projector screen and a plain white projector screen largely depends on your specific viewing environment and, of course, your budget. ALR screens excel in rooms with ambient light and provide superior image quality in such conditions, but come at a significantly higher cost. On the other hand, white screens are more versatile, budget friendly, and suitable for a wider range of settings, but may not perform as well in bright or well lit rooms. Ultimately, the decision should be based on your room's lighting conditions and your priorities for image quality and budget. We'll be sure to leave links to both our reviews on the Elite Screen screen we use here in our theater, as well as the Vividstorm UST screen, so you can hear more about what we had to say 
for each particular unit. And with all that said, I hope this video might have been helpful in deciding which type of screen might be best fit for your space and situation. Let us know if you have any questions or comments down in the comment section below, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.